Hello, welcome back to What the Flick. Christy and Matt, we're still here. It is now trailer time. Trailers come out, and trailer we time, watch them. Time, <laughs> we watch them and right. try to glean intel from them. And today, we don't have to hear Alonzo complain about them. Yeah, we can just pretend. Usually, I don't watch trailers, but Y'all make me watch I trailers, will. and I don't like them. For this show, I will. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible Alonzo gonna... impression, by the way. We love you. That was a terrible impression. So, um, it is a, it's a big week for superheroes. They're all in this movie that's coming out this week, but one of them that's not in this movie not is Venom. I guess he's a Marvel guy. Yes. Matt's gonna yes. like me. Um, Tom Hardy is Venom. Yes. Take a look. Eddie. You're not real. You were just in my head. I'm gonna need Mr. Drake's property back. I don't know. Why would we do that? If you're gonna stay, you will only hurt bad people. The way I see it, we can do whatever we want. Do we have a deal? Are you willing to sacrifice the one thing you hold most dear? You should be extremely afraid. What the hell are you? We are Venom. So he's already been Bane. Now that beautiful Tom Hardy face gets covered up again by some hideous mouth thing. So is he like a heckle heck, heck and jide? Is he like a Jekyll and Hyde guy? He's referring to himself so, as we. Well, so... The history of Venom is, in the comics, uh, Spider-Man in the Secret War story in the 80s picks up, loses his suit, gets a new suit that is this little black thing that turns into a new like skin-tight suit that he's really happy with. Then it turns out, oh, it's a possibly sentient alien symbiote. Oh. And they uh, he gets it off, and then it gets mad, and it keeps coming back, and it's this whole thing. And then it finds another host, Eddie Brock, which is what you see oh. in one of the uh, Tobey Maguire movies, okay. right? Um, Eddie Brock is this other photojournalist who really doesn't like Peter Parker. Okay. And so between that and the symbiote, they're really mad at him. The difference is in this movie, like I'm intrigued by this. They've they've seems to have softened Eddie Brock and given him more of a conscience than I think we've seen okay. than like hardcore fanboys know. Um, and Tom Hardy's doing like methody Tom Hardy stuff right. here, like digging deep to find the drama and the character. The difference you know? though is that at least the way that you'd see uh, Venom get drawn is that the Venom that took over Eddie Brock would like almost rebuild him as a as a body, and so. It's not like you're seeing this as a mask with uh -huh. big teeth. You know, in some of the comics, it's <laughs> more like, kind of oh, no, no, it just rebuilt his whole head. And so anyway. Anyway, I guess it's a thing we'll have to talk about eventually. I am superheroed out, but maybe this will be a cool anti-hero. Anyway, other stuff exists in the world that is not superhero related, including, what's it called? Woman Walks Ahead, starring Jessica Chastain. Take a look. Bullets don't seem to have any effect. This was my vision. White soldiers falling from the sky. Cut start with his army. They tracked down every chief, killed them all. Except for you. The only battle I ever fought against is insignificance. So live more. That's what I want to do. He looked so magnificent. This weapon did not give him reason to hope. No one here has forgotten or forgiven. At least about the 7th Cavalry. It's in over. Down sitting bull's dead. We all think that you and me are planning some kind of uprising. The people need a sign for them to believe in their own strength. They've been angry for a long time. I fear that his return to Dakota is about revenge. You idiots in Washington want to start another war. If we fight, they'll massacre us all. This is what the general wanted all along. And deep down, that's what the bull wants too. And how terrible things have happened here in the past. I do not have terribly high hopes for this. Um, this played at Toronto last year to extremely mixed reviews. Um, it is based on a true story of this New York painter who goes to North Dakota to paint Sitting Bull and gets involved in being an advocate for the Native people. Um, is Jessica Chastain doing a really bizarre, indeterminate accent? A rare kind of period drama for her. I think of her as being 
very contemporary and very vital and, and you know, really strong with like powerfully verbose characters. This just feels like a bad fit all around. Then even though you got Jessica Chastain and Sam Rockwell, who is always amazing, I do not have high hopes for this movie. You know, I, I feel like this is a bit of her doing what she's been talking about for the last few years of, of using her kind of power in Hollywood to address inequality of filmmaking. It's This is directed by Susanna mm -hmm. White, who directed Nanny McPhee mm -hmm. and our kind of traitor. The second Nanny McPhee, I would The wanna, second yes. Nanny McPhee. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she's she's found this story about Caroline Weldon, who was a real person, who, you know, one of the things that we come up against when we start getting into the stories that get told is, we, you know, what tends to get less coverage, I think, even just in the history books, is the roles of women and the roles of people of color. And so you, I think you sometimes end up having to, like they've done here, dig deep to find a role that is at least meaty enough that Chastain seems interested in, right. even though she's playing a character who you're gonna not help but think this is somebody who is a product of their time. So, mm -hmm. it, who, you know, maybe it gets recut a little bit. I don't know. I don't have high hopes, no. but. <laughs> and it, it, it sort of smacks of like this unfortunate kind of white savior yeah. ickiness. Anyway, we'll find out. But, we'll but she, she, yeah, as you say, she's using her estimable clout to get a story told. Speaking of clout and power in Hollywood, wow, Nick Cage, you can't hold him back. He's everywhere. Here he is in 211. Take a look. Five minutes. We're in, we're out, and we're rich. Underground! Yeah! Underground! Abrams Street. One suspect with an automatic weapon outside National Bank. Shot fired! Shot fired! Not here to play any game. My ride along. We gotta find him. I'm hit like Just hang on, Mac. Let's give us something else to worry about. Get him out of there now! and only get to this active shooter as quick as possible. No, you were, you were an hour late, and we were outgunned. <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> only when he yelled what took you so long did I finally feel like, okay, that's this me, might be all right. That's me every time <laughs> I tell Gabe to get up in the morning and he finally comes out for breakfast. Well, talk you so long. <laughs> 211 is, is the California penal code for robbery, in case you're wondering. Okay. Um, we've, we've had a movie called 187, which is, right. which is murder. Now is that we have the penal code or is it the radio code? It's a, it's a California penal code. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, 187. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, they, they say 211 in progress because that's the actual crime uh, that's being committed. All right. I used to be a police reporter oh. in a previous life. So hmm. um, I covered drive-bys. It was really fun. Anyway, so this looks like a vaguely nutty, bad hair Nick Cage movie, but not crazy enough. Not crazy enough. This just kind of looks cheap, yeah. right? It doesn't look quite as bad as Future World, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look much better. I mean, um, Apparently, uh, Mom and Dad's a good nutty movie from Nick Cage this year, as is Mandy. So if that's the vein of Nick Cage movie that you want, that is going to exist somewhere. Um, what this, was? I don't know. This looks like um, Training Day meets Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah. Not interested in any of that. 